Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. A few weeks back, we designed this carry handle for the Prusa Mark III. And guys had some really good comments uh, on the video. And I'd kind of alluded to uh, stand by for part two, or there may be something else in the works. So that's what we're here to talk about today. So let's do this. So the original handle works great as just a carrying handle, but you still have to take it off and store it somewhere or stash it to the side if you want to put the filament holder back on. So why not merge those into a single universal part? So let's jump over to Fusion 360 and do just that. So the first time that we looked at this, we only did the single cutout here for the pipe and we designed the part so that it was, same thing was printed twice, it was reversible and it would apply a clamping action to the bar as you pulled upward on the PVC pipe that was acting as the handle. Well, that was great, but as I alluded to in some of the uh, comments, um, I thought it could be better even, even after initially doing that. So let's take this to the next level. I've already went ahead and started on the base sketch here and as you can see, what I did was I reversed it so the hook is now at the bottom. Here, we've got the circle, and then I've added an extension off to the side here, and we're going to actually delete this line and reapply it. Here, because I didn't like the way that one looked. And that gives us our base shape. So let's go ahead and extrude this up, just like we did the other one. Uh, now this was all done using the same techniques as we did for the first one. It was all just circles and squares, um, circles or rectangles and lines. So, but let's extrude this up and uh, take a look at it there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this up to 30 millimeters, and that's going to be the, basically the clamping width. Um, that's that's going to apply the force on the bar. You hit OK. Now we're going to go back to our sketches. And as somebody had pointed out in the comments on the first one, you can right click on the sketches there and also hit Edit Plane. We're going to change our view again. We're going to hit Extrude again. This time we're going to take the entire thing up six millimeters to get our thickness. We're going to hit OK, and that gives us our base shape. Um, oh, correction, I'm sorry. I wanted to take that out to 12 millimeters. There we go. Edit that feature, and let's take that up to 12 millimeters. Helps if we grab the right one. OK, now we're back where we want to go. B. Now we're going to create a new sketch with a circle, and we're going to put it on this top plane. And using what we had from the base there, we're going to create a 30 millimeter circle. We're going to do stop sketch. We're going to extrude that. But instead of going upward, we're going to take that down minus 6. That provides us our cutout for the handle. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit trickier. We're going to create another sketch on that same top surface. And we're going to go up here and we're going to create a circle again. This time we're going to create it out to 30 millimeters. Then we're going to go up and create a center point arc. And we're going to drop that so that we get 180 degrees out of it. Oops. And it does not look like I got that exactly right. So Let's do this a different way. Let's do a rectangle. And delete this later from the center. Let's drag that out that way. We'll just leave that there as a reference. 
Now we can do our center point arc. Now we have a point. Again, we're going to make it 180. Boom, it's there. Now we can go back and we can delete our circle that we don't need and delete this square since we no longer need it. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you to a new tool. Let's drag that dimension out of the way. What we're going to do is insert an offset. So we're going to hit sketch, go down to offset, or just hit O. We're going to click on that line, and then we're going to offset that 5 millimeters. We're going to hit OK. Now we can take a line and go from here to there, from there to there, and now we have a little U shape. We can hit stop sketch or just hit E for extrude, and now we can extrude that up, and let's call it about 10 millimeters. And there we have our filament catch. Now all we need to do is just clean this up a little bit. We're going to put a chamfer on the bottom, and we're going to apply a 0.4 millimeter chamfer. Drop that back home. Now we're going to do the same thing for the top. And I think we got everything there. And we're going to apply the same 0.4 millimeter chamfer. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a nice little fillet to this surface. That angle. That angle. That angle. That side, let's rotate this so we can get to the others. That side, that side, and that side. Let's move this out of the way so we make sure we got everything. On the vertical, I'm going to call that a one millimeter, and let's see how that looks. Nice and rounded. We're going to hit OK, and we are done. So now we can take and go make, 3D print. We're going to make sure it's not sent to utility. We're going to go ahead and select our entire body, hit OK. And we're going to save that to the desktop. OK, over here in our slicer, we're going to bring in two copies of that model. Then you're going to right click on one of the two. You're going to hit mirror along the X axis. And now that's going to create a, an exact duplicate, so you have a right and a left half. Now we could have done this in Fusion 360, but it was just as easy to do it in the slicer here. And now you can either print those as a single piece or as one big file. You can arrange these on the bed so that they give you a little bit better spacing. like so. And that's it. So let's go ahead and slice these and send these over to the printer and we'll meet back here to take a look at how they came out. Okay, so our parts came out great. I printed these in Filamentum CPE, their, their new blue, and it's a beautiful filament because um, I wanted it to be sturdy and strong. So let's see how these work out. We're going to take the old one off and set it aside, and we're going to take off the original spool holder. Now we can kind of just to line these up to get a feel for where we want to put this on. Somewhere about there. Now this one is going to clamp on from the bottom. Oops, and I want to actually do this this way. So it's going to clamp on from the bottom, leaning backwards. And we're going to use this as a spacer to get it about the right spacing. And clamp on the second one the same manner. 
now for us to put filament on, all we do is use that same handle that we used before, and it's going to sit right there and rest nicely on the rod. To change it, you just simply lift it off, and it spools out. If you need to travel, simply lift that off, take off one of the two sides, insert the handles into the holes, tilting it back on, and there you now have your handle, just as we had before. So we've now killed two birds with one stone. So I hope you like the new version of the carry handle and filament holder merged, the spool holder merged. I will have the files for this up on Thingiverse uh, probably by the time you finish watching the video, if not sooner. I thank you for watching, and if you like what we're doing, please be sure to subscribe and to give us a thumbs up. And be sure to check the video description below for the Thingiverse link, and as well as several affiliate links that we have down there. If you're not obligated to use those, but if you don't mind, it costs you nothing extra, and it kicks a little bit back to help the channel grow and to allow us to buy nice filament like this, the filament um, uh, CPE to explore and play with. So that's all for now. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.